Happy Sabbath. Happy day. God is good all the time. Just take a second and then greet the person next to you and say one blessing. Give the person one, one, one. Bless the person, bless the person. Great. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. We thank God for his grace and providence for us the whole of this week. That he availed himself to us to come before him and then to put our petitions and our burdens before him. Indeed, it was a week, week of prayer and I think this has been one of the most wonderful experiences I had in my life. Before I go to today's issue, please permit me to use this particular opportunity and this great platform to thank Pastor Peter Nyaga and your beautiful wife, Isabella, Pastor Mario, and the wife, Edina. I think the third pastor, I've not met him, and I am adding him as well. To thank you for availing this mighty platform and a pulpit to a young man like me to come and speak to your church. On behalf of my family and on behalf of my church in Ghana, we want to thank you for such an opportunity. I want to proceed to also say, I want to thank the leadership of the church, the church elders, for agreeing that indeed uh, I should come and speak to the young people here. The third one, I want to thank the leadership of the youth for accepting that, indeed, they want me to come and speak. And I want to thank the communication team. I want to thank everyone, but the communication team, for the wonderful work they have done this particular week. And then I want to thank each and every one of you who sat before the screens to be part of this wonderful week of prayer. May God bless us all. Amen. Before I proceed, I was actually having, I, I came from Ghana with my research topic, so that at least I will research very well at the university. But the very day I set my foot into Nairobi Central SDA Church, I think I've changed my mind. What do you say to that? Oh, say amen to that. I think I'll go back and back to the university and tell them they should allow me to study Nairobi SDA Church Central SDA Church as my research. That is what I'm going to do, and I'll make sure that I petition, I, I petition them very well for them to agree. Because your church is a very exceptional church. And it's a church that is a model for many churches to come and study. And I am very grateful and honored to be here. In fact, the whole week has been a very wonderful one. The topic that I was given was a very wonderful topic. In fact, the topic given to me was my circle of influence amplified. I repeat, my cycle of influence amplified. And within the week, we were able to look at various topics. We were able to look at various subtopics. We were able to break that particular break, break that particular big team into smaller, smaller teams. And we were able to discuss them. And then we ended the evening program yesterday. Pastor, once again, I want to thank you for the opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to pay attention, beloved in Christ, to the very simple sermon I'm going to preach. It is a sermon you have seen before. But allow me to use what we call the narrative theology to be able to present this topic to you. I am going to present you with two different cases, which you know before, in a very different perspective. And I want you to make your decision at the end of the sermon. I am happy we are in November. Maybe already you are putting your plans for the end of the year. But I am praying that this particular sermon give you one or two things that will disrupt that particular plan you have put in place. And give you a different perspective for you to pursue Christ 
in this year. Amen. In fact, when I spoke about my circle of influence amplify, I decided to end the whole Saturday or Sabbath sermon with what? Your choices are your seed for transgenerational influence. Your choices are your seeds for transgenerational what? Influence. And I have a very wonderful subtopic. Stay in charge to be in charge. I say what? Stay charged to be what? In charge. You need to stay charged to be what? In charge. If you don't stay charged, you will never be what? In charge. I'm going to walk you through that. When we talk about transgenerational, I just want to explain it in my own language. It means that, let's say you have a company, a very big company, a very big organization. Every serious businessman would think of the next succession plan. Sometimes people even think that next 30 years, who is going to succeed them in that particular company? And what they do is that they prepare the successor with all the knowledge and wisdom and give them all the values and the ethics to be able to what? To carry the company to the next level. In Christ Jesus, that is the same thing. And even when I came here, your church demonstrated that. That indeed the leaders of the church has allowed themselves and has taught the young people and mentored them in such a way that tomorrow, if you are not here, the church can still move on and do better. That is the same thing God did in his own plan. So in the plan of God and in the tradition of the, what, the Israelites, always it is the firstborn son who received the double portion of the inheritance of the father. It is something that is being put down. It is a convention that everybody respects. But beloved in Christ, there are certain things we do today that have consequences tomorrow. There are some seed we plant today that we reap tomorrow. And I want us all to pay attention to the sermon. Let us move on and look at what we have today. So I've thanked the others. Let us move on. In the journey of a particular woman who was considered as what? As buried. She has no children. She wanted to give birth. She was longing to have her own children. And indeed, it was becoming difficult for her. She has been in marriage. The husband was almost 60 years and there was no child. So the husband petitioned God, prayed to God, and asked God for favor that God grant my family a child. Why? Because all the blessings we have given to us, we need somebody we can what? We can transition that blessing into. We need somebody who will inherit those blessings. I can say the family was just expecting one child. They were just expecting one child. But fortunately for them, they had two. Whilst Rebecca was pregnant, she realized that there was some babies kicking her stomach and the, the, the whole experience was a strange one. So Rebecca went to a seer, a servant of God, to find out what was happening in her stomach. And if you read the verse 30, or the, if you read from the verse, verse 20, they will tell you that indeed, the seer or the prophet told her that indeed we have two nations in your stomach. We have two nations in your stomach. So, conceived and carried by the same mother. I want you to pay attention to the kind of words I select here. I am using them comparatively. Conceived, the two children were conceived and carried for nine months by the same mother. I heard the two children were born on the same day. Let's move on. These two children were born to the same parents. Let us move on. These parents raised these two young men in the same beautiful house. So they were all having the same equal treatment. None of them was given advantage over the other. What I want you to know is that one thing God has given all of us equally, as human beings and as his children, 
It's 24 hours a day. God did not cheat anyone. He gave us equal hours. But what I want you to know is that the seed you plant in your 24 hours is the seed what? It is the harvest you will get. Whatever you plant is what you are going to reap. And I want you to know that your decisions are the seed you are planting for the next five, six generations if Jesus starts. Some of us are already reaping the consequences. Some of us are already reaping the benefits. But I call you today as a servant of God to remind you that whatever decision you are taking today, Sabbath, and from now onwards, you should consider it very thoroughly because there are attached benefits or consequences. Two children giving birth by the same mother, into the same family, in the same home. They all were growing up. My question is, what brought the difference? They look alike. They ate the same food. Probably they were all sleeping in the same room. There was no school those days. So we could say they were in the same school. They were all in Maxwell Academy. What was the difference? At this point, you can start seeing the difference. The difference is that they started making choices. They started making choices. So let's see the choices they made. I tell you, the choices are yours. You decide. Whatever choice in life, you are the one who decides. God does not control your choice. He has given our choices to us. But he's saying that you have the right to make any choice you want. But be very, very careful in the choices you make. So Jacob and Esau, according to the Bible story, Esau was the eldest. Jacob was the youngest. While they were going, they all decided to make choices according to their own will. And God blessed it. So I am asking you today too, all the things that are happening in your life, many may not be have been your, your own making, but many were your own decisions. They were your own choices. And whatever result you got is the result of your choices. So the way is there. Where are you passing? The question I want to ask you is that by the end of the day, will you be an Esau or you be a Jacob? Let's move on and look. So when the children started growing up, they decided to choose vocations. They, discussed, they decided to choose jobs. They decided to what? To now work in their own world, their own systems. So Je Esau decided that my father has animals, my father has livestock, my father has a farm. I am not going to do any of that. For me, I want to be a hunter. I don't want to stay in the house. I want to be in the bush. I want to be in the jungle. I do not want to rest. I want to be chasing animals. I do not want air conditioning. I want to sweat. I don't want any good clothes. I want to wear wretched clothes. I do not want to smell good. I want to smell funny. These were his choices. Because you know the characteristics of a hunter. I'm just elaborating them. So number one, he dressed in wretched clothes. Number two, he smelled funny because of the blood of the animal he killed. Number three, he used more energy but less sense. Number three, he lives in the jungle. Number four, he kills the animals he gets. Any animal he saw, he never kept a live animal. Any animal he got, he killed it. What I'm saying, pay attention to the characteristics. Because some of us are having animals in our hands and we are killing them. All the, the benefit God has given to us, we are killing it today. Because we are thinking of today. We are not thinking about the third, fourth generation that will come after us. And I am telling you once again, your choices are your seed for transgenerational influence. Whether your name will be known or it will not be known, it is your own decision. Up to today, we still pray and we say the God of Abraham. Why? Because Abraham thought of what? The next four, five, six generations. 
His decisions were based on God's guidance. And indeed, he delivered. And he was called the father of faith. I am asking you this morning, as a member of this mighty church, I am asking you whether your name will be remembered in the next three, four years, or in the next four, 40, 50 years, if Christ tarries. Will your children be able to remember your name again? Are you actually building something that will be referred to as a legacy? The decisions you are making today are those that are going to give your children and grandchildren the benefit or the consequences. So this young man, any animal he got, he killed it. He was thinking of the present. He was not thinking of the future. He operated the economy we call hand-to-mouth economy. I think you understand that economy. Praise the Lord. God is good. Happy Sabbath. Are we together? Yes, he was operating what we call hand-to-mouth economy. It means whatever he got, he spent. Either for a new shoe, either for a new shirt, either he, because you know he likes sports. So he cooked meat and he eats. Any animal he brought from the bush, that very day he cooks everything. When he finished eating, the following day he's going to chase again. Some of us are here, whatever money we get from the market, whatever money we get from our salary, we eat it today and we are going tomorrow to chase again. We always think about today. We are not thinking about tomorrow. But we have young people, wonderful young people here who are waiting to take the baton from us. And if we are taking this kind of decision, what future are we going to hand over to them? And that is the message I have for you this morning. That any decision you take has consequences. Let us quickly go and end there. He suffered much, but has less. Do you know why? Sometimes he goes to the bush, chase them, animal, chase them, chase them, and he doesn't get any animal and come home tired, exhausted, depressed, and empty, and hungry on top. Some of us, we go, we chase, we chase, we chase, and sometimes because we chase like hunters, we come back home tired, depressed, and what? Hungry. Now let us see another person's choice. Then the younger brother decided that, okay, that was what I was telling you. Most of us hunt for our salaries and spend it like a hunter. Are we together? Oh, God is good. And you are a mighty church. I want to hear your voice. God is good. Most of us spend our salaries like a hunter. The young people here, we are here because of you. Pay attention to this. If you spend your salary like a hunter, you don't have a future. Don't operate a math economy. Let me quickly go because of time. We have borrowed for present comfort, and we are now waking up early and sleeping late to pay the banks. I heard one of the people told me, I borrow money to buy television. I borrow money to buy, to buy, oh, I borrow money to buy iPhone. I borrow money to buy, pastor, give me some of the terms. I borrow money, oh, help me, Madam Isabella. Help me with some of them. I borrow money to buy comfort, present comfort. And now the banks are chasing you. And you can't sleep, you can't wake up. If you go to Ghana, we have what we call in Ghana quick loan. Quick loan means they call you, do you need a loan? You said yes. We say we can give you the loan in the next 10 minutes. Then you say okay. Then they ask you which amount you want. You say. Then they deceive you that the interest rate is cool. Then you are happy. Then they give the money to you today. Then after you taking the money and walking away, you get to the house, and then your thinking cap now rewinds. Then you now know that, hmm, I am paying triple of what I took. And these people will keep on chasing you, chasing you. You will never have a peace. That is what some of us have placed our hands in. We have placed our hands in the hands of what? A what? An anchor, and we cannot come out. Why? Because we took the wrong choices. We were looking for present comfort. Our thinking was the thinking of a what? A hunter. 
Let me move on so that I don't become late. I want to tell you something before I forget. Never negotiate when you are what? Hungry. That is the first what? Lesson. Grace, I said what? Never negotiate when you are what? Hungry. Number two, lesson number two. Never negotiate when you are what? Tired. Anytime you have any decision to take and you are tired, rest before you take that decision. Don't be so fast because there are consequences. And then the last one I want you to note before I move on is beware of your bed rights. Beware of your what? Your bed right. Every one of us here has a bed right. Every one of us has a bed right. And if you don't take care, your bed right will go. If you remember in the days of King Ahab, there was a man called Naboth. He was given a bed right, which was a land. When the king wanted it, he said, I won't sell it. He said, What? For this, I will say, the king said, let me give you two, three to replace. He said, no, this is an inheritance from my father, and I'm not ready to what? To share it. Ladies and gentlemen, each and every one of us here has a birthright. And let us protect our birthright with all our might and with all our heart, our prayers. Praise the Lord. Wonderful. Now let's move on and look at quickly what somebody also decided. So his younger brother decided that, for me, I will not be a hunter. I want to be very diplomatic. I won't be a hunter. I can't be running. So he dressed in quality wool. He smelled so good. He spent less energy but much wisdom. He rests on the field and in the tent. He cares and multiplies the animals he has. Look at the difference. This one killed the animals he had. But this one what? Multiplied the animals he had. This one tormented the animals he had with bullets. But this one gave the animal he had milk. Can you see the difference? Then, let's move on. He cares and multiplies his animals. Number five. Watch it closely. So he thinks into the future. His brother was a hunter. He thought of the present. But Jacob thought into the future. That because tomorrow I will need more animals, let me reproduce more animals so that tomorrow when I need it, I can just walk and have one. But his, his other brother was in the bush, chasing one at a time, one at a time. Do you know why? Some of us are like uh, Esau. We have no investments. I said, we have what? No investments. What we do is that every day we go to the market, we go to our workplace, then we chase for one, two thousand Kenyan shillings. Then we bring it back home, we buy uh, we do some small japati, we add it to Ogali, then we mix it up with something interesting because Kenya, I like your food. Praise the Lord. You can see the energy in me. It's all evident that indeed you baptize me very well here. Praise the Lord. So think of that. This guy thought of the future. The other one never thought of the future. He blew his investment away. But this one multiplied his investment. This one made future investment. He suffered less and made much. Whilst his brother suffers what? Much and made what? Less. All as a result of what? Choices. Now let me run so that time don't catch me. The warning in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 15 to 16. See to it that no one falls short of the grace of God. And that no bitter root grow up to to cause troubles and defile many. 16. See that no one is sexually immoral or is ungodly like Esau, who for a single meal saw his inheritance right as the what? Oldest son. It's a warning. That we should be very careful. That we don't think like Esau and sell our birthrights. Pastor, there's a man in my country. He's now filthy rich. Do you know why? His father bought a land in a village. An old land. And when they were sharing the properties of the father, the, the other brothers picked their lands in the town. You know, there was no will. So he got the one in the village. And people were now saying, what will you use a village land for? What do you need it for? 
And this young man held to the land and made proper documentation and kept it. Here you call Mpesa, right? Or let's say Etel. So this telecommunication network in Ghana called MTN came to the place to look for places where they can mount their, what? Their um, satellites. And when they check for signal, they did not get the signal in the town. So they have to move and search. They were moving and searching. They were moving and searching. And when they go to this faithful village and they check the place where the network is so strong, the signal is so strong, was the piece of land given to this young man. Then MTN said, who is the owner of this land? And they found him. Then MTN said, young man, how much are you going to sell this land? It was his inheritance. It was his birthright. And he said, anyway, I may sell the land to you for some millions of cities, but I want to keep 5% of what? The, the total. So that every year, MTN will pay me 5% of the money until eternity. Praise the Lord. If you will not agree to that, you can go look for a different land. And MTN will not get the land anywhere. So MTN decided that whatever amount the young man is requesting for, they were going to pay. And they continue paying me 5% up to today. And today he's very, very rich. But there are some of us here who have sold our lands. We have not thought our children will grow and build. There are some of us who have sold our land. We have not thought our children will go to school. There are some of us here who have split all our investments for present comfort, forgetting of the future. I am here to tell you that we need to take a new decision today. And you are going to change the pattern of your choices because any choice you make has transgenerational effects. And as men of God and women of God, God wants us what? To make influence. He wants us to be influential. He wants us to make impact. He wants our names to be heard around the globe. So our decisions must be very carefully made. So this was the warning given to us. This is in the New Testament. Don't think like Esau. Now let's move on and learn two few things. Then one day, Esau, who was having the birthright, came back from the bush without any animal. And he was so hungry that he came to his younger brother Jacob because Jacob had animals in the house. Then he told Jacob, can you give me part of the stew? I'll be revealing it later. Maybe time will not permit me. If you read Ministry of what? Health. Our lady prophet, Elijah White, recorded that when they were given birth, I will show you, but when they were given birth, the parents sat them down and told them the benefit and the importance of their birthright. So it couldn't have been that Esau did not know the, the, what, the value of the birthright. He knew it. But he gave it out for just a meal. For just a meal. Pastor Mayo, Mrs. Mayo, he gave it out for a meal. Just a meal. He was aware. So Jacob said, if you want my food, then give me the bed rights. And this young man made a very loose statement. He said, I am about to die. What do I need a bed right for? Some of us, that's what we have been doing. When we realize that we are in 60 years, and we, 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 we are now about to die, we say, oh, let me sell all the lands. The children, when they grow, they'll look for this. Many people, it is in Ghana, so I know it is here too. Because the African blood is thick. It flows across all boundaries, isn't it? It is true. So he sold it cheaply for just a stew. And the young man was wise. He said, I need a legal what? certification to show that indeed the, land, the right now belongs to me. So he now made him swear. And he swore. In those days in Israel, the best thing you needed to certify any deal was what? Swearing. An oath. So he did. So if you read your Bible, you say, Jacob was a cheat, your theology is having a problem. If you say he lied to his father, your theology is right. But if you say he cheated his brother, I don't agree with you because they went into agreement. Are we together here? Are we all together? Yes, he gave it out. He did not force him, he gave it out. 
And that is how some of us have been giving out our inheritance. We have been giving out our birthrights. And some of us are even in the chapel here. We are thinking of going home tomorrow to give out our what? Our birthrights. I want you to pull the brick. This is what Ellen U. White said. Let me read the first one so that the rest, you can look at it. That is a page. Is that what? They were taught to regard the birthright as a matter of great importance. For it includes not only an inheritance of worldly wealth, but spiritual what? Preeminence. He who received it was to be the priest of the, his family. And in the line of his prosperity, the redeemer of the world, Jesus Christ, will come. So this was not a small thing. They were told that if you are the others, you are going to receive the what? The double portion of what? The inheritance. And that is where Jesus Christ will come from. So that like we say, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of what? Esau. Look at this particular great privilege. And he said, this is the God of Esau. I will take steel and give it out. Young ladies who are listening to me here, some of you, your birthright is your purity. Your birthright is your purity, which you have to keep for your husband. But because of what? Just a meal, just an iPhone, just a shoe, just a dress, you gave it out for free. You gave it free. That is your birthright. Purity. Mm. Let's move on so that time don't catch us. Now let me go, because I know that many people are listening to us around Kenya. Africa had a bed right. Africa had a bed right. And I can assign Africa as what? The firstborn. Because according to my history, Africa was the what? The home of what? Civilization, isn't it? Egypt was the what? The first place of civilization. We were making what? Metals, we were melting metals, we were doing great things. In Africa, everything was happening in Africa. But at a point in time, somebody decided to take what? A meal just for him and his family, and they gave it out for free. And you can see that we are struggling to get our bed right back, isn't it? Oil is in Ghana, but we are suffering. Gold is in Ghana, we are suffering. Cocoa is in Ghana, we are suffering. We have bauxite in Ghana, we are suffering. We have cashew, we are suffering. We have, we have salt, we are suffering. We have a lot of things in Ghana, but we are suffering because somebody gave the birthright for free. So it is not only in our family. That's why he said, you have two nations in your womb. An individual represents a nation. So please, any decision you are taking today, be very, very careful with it. Let me run with the time. Now look at it. Jacob was thoughtful, he was diligent, he was caretaking, ever thinking, more of the future than the present. He was content with what? To dwell at home, occupied in the care of the flocks, and he tilled the land and multiplied everything with his what? His perseverance. Ladies and gentlemen, beloved in Christ, if you go back home today, and God permit, and you have a Sunday tomorrow, sit down to draft a plan that will give you back your birthright. Praise the Lord. You need to drive a plan to give you back your, your birthright. Until you do that, you are going nowhere. There will not be influence, there will not be any amplifier, and your life will be in a fix. Young people of Nairobi, I am telling you today, you have great choices to make, and make sure that you make God first. If you take God as your first, God will guide you in your choices, and your birthright will be intact and you can make transgenerational influence. Some of us are here. Let me now ask you. This is going to be painful, but take it lightly with me. We are all created by the same God, isn't it? We are all given 24 hours, isn't it? We all worship the same God, isn't it? We are all in the same Nairobi mighty Central Asia Church, isn't it? Under the training of the same pastors, isn't it? Briefing the same air, isn't it? Sitting on the same fields, isn't it? But ask yourself, why is your life different from other people? Why are you not making it? Poverty is not part of Christianity. Let me tell the Adventists this. 
Poverty is not part of Christianity. Poverty is not holiness. Don't let anybody deceive you as being poor is a way for you to go to heaven. He is deceiving you. The rich are those in heaven. Abraham, Job, Isaac, Naba. They were all rich people. Now mention to me, apart from um, uh, uh, Lazarus, even it is a biblical word, symbolism. Tell me the person you know being poor in heaven. You can't pay your tithe. You will not be faithful. You will not do the right things. If the children are needing money, you won't contribute. You will only be here. Ladies and gentlemen, poverty is not part of our religion. Poverty is not part of Adventism. Let us rise and take the right decision so that we can give great influence to our generations to come so that Christ Jesus will bless us. The same church, the same God, the same Father we pray to, but different result. Different result because of the decisions you have taken and the seed you planted. Change your seeds and get different results. Until you change your decision, the, your circumstance will never change. It is time for us to, what? to stay charged so that we can be what? in charge. As I end my sermon today with you, ladies and gentlemen, one day if God permits, maybe pastors will expand on it. You know how Esau passed and, be, and regained his what? His birthright. Maybe he will guide you together. But I call you today. I call on you to take charge of your life, to stay in charge, so that your circle of influence can be what? Amplified. I repeat, I am calling the people of Nairobi Central Asia Church and the people of Africa and the people of Kenya that stay in charge so that your life will be in what? In charge. People who make influence are people who what? Who are in charge. Be in charge of your life. Take the steering wheel of your life. But let Christ guide you. Take good decisions. Think about the next five, six generations. And I tell you, your name will never be forgotten. May the good Lord bless us today, and may he pour his countenance upon us, and avail his providence upon us, in the name of Jesus. Amen.